Greetings, my cosmic explorers. I am May Tobo, your guide to the mysteries of the universe. Welcome back to my blog, where science meets attitude and wonder knows no bounds. Today, we will discuss the era of quantum computing, the Frankenstein's monster of the 21st century. Not because it's evil, but because like all great myths, it was born from human ambition, stitched together from the most bizarre laws of nature, and now it's beginning to think for itself. To help us break it all down, I've brought along the brilliant Brian. So grab your coffee, fasten your seat belts, and get ready for some serious celestial wisdom. Brian, the floor is yours. Thanks, May. I'll do my best to guide us through this thought-provoking topic. Let's explore the dreamscape together. Imagine a universe where your socks, once separated, somehow know each other's state across the cosmos. Where a cat can be both dead and alive until you peek under the box. Where reality is not a solid stage, but a probabilistic dance of waves and particles and where the act of observation changes the outcome. This is not a sci-fi script. This is quantum mechanics, the bizarre, beautiful, and utterly mind-bending foundation of quantum computing. And if you thought classical computers were powerful, wait until you meet their quantum cousins. Machines that don't just compute, but evolve, entangle, and superpose their way through problems that would take supercomputers millennia to solve. Welcome to the quantum era, where physics, philosophy and futurism collide in a storm of uncertainty, potential and a dash of existential dread. Let's start with the truth. A quantum computer is not a computer in the way your laptop is. It doesn't run Windows, it doesn't have a mouse and no, you can't use it to binge Netflix yet. In fact, as one scientist put it, it's not a computer, it's an analog system that grows a wave function until it gives you an answer. At its core, a quantum computer is a carefully orchestrated quantum system, a machine that manipulates the fundamental laws of nature to perform calculations. Instead of using bits, 0s and 1s, it uses qubits, quantum bits that can be 0, 1 or both at the same time. This isn't magic, it's superposition, one of the cornerstones of quantum mechanics. And here's the kicker. These qubits can become entangled, meaning the state of one instantly influences the other, no matter how far apart they are. Einstein famously called this spooky action at a distance. Today, we call it quantum computing. So is it a computer? Technically, yes, but philosophically, it's more like a quantum orchestra where every particle plays a note in a symphony of probabilities. And the final chord is your answer. Classical computers are brilliant. They've taken us to the moon, connected the world, and made TikTok possible. But they have limits. Some problems, like simulating a complex molecule or optimizing global logistics, grow exponentially harder as they scale. Even the fastest supercomputers would need thousands of years to solve them. Enter quantum computers. Thanks to quantum parallelism, a quantum computer can evaluate all possible solutions at once. It doesn't try every path. It explores them all simultaneously, like a cosmic Google Maps that sees every route from Moscow to Mars in a single blink. For example, Shaw's algorithm, a quantum algorithm, can factor large numbers exponentially faster than any classical method. This is not just a math trick, it's a cryptographic earthquake because modern encryption like RSA relies on the difficulty of factoring large numbers. Other quantum algorithms like Grover's search can find items in unsorted databases quadratically faster and quantum annealing used by companies like D-Wave is already being applied to optimization problems in finance, logistics and AI. In short, quantum computers don't just do things faster, they do things classical computers fundamentally cannot. Ah yes, the dark side of quantum computing, cryptography apocalypse. Imagine a world where every encrypted message, every bank transaction, every government secret is suddenly visible. That's the risk once a powerful enough quantum computer is built. Shaw's algorithm could crack today's public key cryptography in hours, if not minutes. This isn't speculation. In 2023, experts warned that 
Harvest now, decrypt later attacks are already happening. Hackers stealing encrypted data today waiting for quantum computers to unlock it tomorrow. Hence the race for post-quantum cryptography. New encryption methods resistant to quantum attacks. NIST is already standardizing quantum safe algorithms, but the clock is ticking. As one cybersecurity expert put it, quantum computing is not just a technological shift, it's a geopolitical time bomb. The quantum race is the new space race. Only this time, it's not about planting a flag on the moon, but about owning the future of computation. The United States leads with heavy investments from IBM, Google and the National Quantum Initiative. IBM's Quantum System 2, announced in December 2023, is a modular quantum computer built with 133 qubit Heron processors, a step towards scalable, fault-tolerant systems. China is not far behind. In 2025, it launched an unhackable quantum communication network using quantum key distribution, QKD, via satellite. They've also built photonic quantum computers like Zhujiang, claiming quantum advantage in specific tasks. Europe is playing catch-up with strong research from the EU's quantum flagship program. Meanwhile, Russia has its Russian quantum center, RQC, and Rosatom, developing ion trap and superconducting qubits. Rosatom even has a career portal, QR code and all, inviting dreamers to help build their quantum machine. And then there's D-Wave, the Canadian pioneer, which in November 2024 launched the first commercial quantum computer with over 4,400 qubits. Its Advantage 2 processor is already being used in AI, materials, science and optimization, but here's the twist. No one has yet achieved practical quantum advantage. The point where a quantum computer solves a real-world problem faster than any classical machine. We're close, but not there. As of late 2024, quantum computing is in its adolescent phase, full of promise, prone to errors, and still figuring out its identity. Today's machines are noisy, intermediate-scale quantum NISQ devices. They have tens to hundreds of qubits, but they're fragile. Decoherence, the loss of quantum state, happens in microseconds. Error correction is a nightmare, yet progress is explosive. Quantinium's H2156 qubit machine, launched in June 2024, boasts industry-leading error correction. Meanwhile, researchers at the Perimeter Institute have proposed a relativistic quantum computer, one that uses Einstein's special relativity to perform quantum operations. Yes, you read that right. Einstein is now part of the quantum stack. And in a stunning breakthrough, physicists created a solid made of light. A super solid that could revolutionize photonic quantum computing. But the biggest challenge remains scaling. We need millions of stable qubits for truly transformative applications. Today we have hundreds, so are we there? Not yet, but the path is lit. Rumors spread like quantum waves. NASA has shut down its quantum computing project, but the truth? As of October 2024, NASA has resumed its quantum research. The earlier shutdown was likely a pause due to unexpected results, not a surrender. NASA's interest is practical. Quantum optimization for mission scheduling, quantum simulation for designing ultralight spacecraft materials, and quantum AI for autonomous space exploration. Quantum computing could one day help plan Mars missions with perfect efficiency, or simulate the behavior of exotic materials in zero gravity. So no, NASA didn't give up. They're just being very careful. Because when you're playing with the fabric of reality, unexpected results are expected. Why are we building quantum computers? Is it just to break encryption or win scientific glory? No, it's deeper. Quantum computers are necessary because the universe is quantum. Classical computers struggle to simulate quantum systems like molecules, chemical reactions or high temperature superconductors. But a quantum computer, it speaks the same language. In chemistry, quantum computers could simulate drug interactions at the molecular level, slashing the time and cost of drug discovery. In material science, they could design room temperature superconductors, revolutionizing energy. 
In climate modeling, they could simulate complex atmospheric reactions with unprecedented accuracy. In finance, they could optimize portfolios across millions of variables. But the risks are real, job disruption, cryptographic collapse, and the potential for quantum-powered AI that outpaces human control. Still, as one researcher said, the alternative is stagnation. Quantum computing isn't just an option, it's an evolutionary step. Here's a rule. Do not look inside the box. In quantum mechanics, observation changes reality. This is the observer effect. When you measure a qubit, you collapse its superposition into a definite state, zero or one. You destroy the quantum magic. So if you peak at a quantum computer mid-calculation, you ruin the computation. It's like trying to watch a soap bubble form by poking it. This is why quantum algorithms are designed to extract information at the end, after the wave function has evolved into the correct answer. As one physicist joked, the quantum computer works best when you leave it alone and pretend it doesn't exist. Quantum mechanics runs on rules that defy common sense. Superposition. A particle can be in multiple states at once. Entanglement. Two particles can be linked across space, sharing a single quantum state. Uncertainty. You can't know everything precisely. The more you know about position, the less about momentum. Tunneling. Particles can pass through barriers they shouldn't be able to. Measurement collapse. Observing a system forces it into a definite state. These aren't flaws, they're features, and quantum computers exploit everyone. Forget silicon chips. Quantum computers are built from exotic matter. Superconducting circuits, IBM, Google. Tiny loops cooled near absolute zero. Trapped ions, IonQ, Russian Quantum Center. Individual atoms suspended in electromagnetic fields. Photons, Xanadu Jujang, light particles manipulated on photonic chips. Topological qubits, Microsoft. Theoretical particles called any ones resistant to noise. Each approach has trade-offs. Superconducting qubits are fast but fragile. Trapped ions are stable but slow. Photons are great for communication but hard to store. The dream, a hybrid system that combines the best of all worlds. David Deutsch, physicist, pioneer and philosopher didn't just build quantum algorithms. He asked, what does quantum computing mean for reality? In the 1980s, he proposed that quantum computers could test the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, the idea that every quantum possibility branches into a new universe. To Deutsch, a quantum computer isn't just calculating, it's harnessing parallel universes to solve problems. The qubits aren't just in superposition, they're computing across realities. Wild, yes. But as he said, if the universe isn't computing, what is it doing? The story begins in 1981 when Richard Feynman asked, can we simulate quantum physics with classical computers? His answer, no we need quantum computers. In 1985, David Deutsch formalized the concept of a quantum Turing machine. In 1994, Peter Shaw stunned the world with his factoring algorithm. The 2000s saw the first qubits in labs, not laptops. The 2010s brought Google, IBM and D-Wave into the game. In 2019, Google claimed quantum supremacy with its 53-qubit Sycamore chip. Today we're building not just machines, but ecosystems, quantum operating systems, quantum networks, even a quantum internet. Quantum computers aren't just for physicists, they're for drug discovery, simulating protein folding and molecular interactions, logistics, optimizing delivery routes for millions of packages, finance, risk modeling, portfolio optimization, fraud detection, AI accelerating machine learning with quantum neural networks. At Climate Science, modeling complex chemical reactions in the atmosphere. Rolls-Royce already uses quantum computing to design better jet engines. Rosatom sees quantum as a tool for energy optimization. And Alibaba, despite closing its lab due to funding, once dreamed of quantum e-commerce. 
Chemistry is quantum physics in disguise. Every bond, every reaction is governed by wave functions. Classical computers approximate these with brute force. Quantum computers emulate them naturally. Imagine designing a fertilizer that uses less energy or a battery with 10 die x the capacity. Quantum simulation could make it possible. As one researcher said, we're not just discovering new material, we're inventing them. Classical computers generate pseudo-random numbers, predictable if you know the seed. Quantum computers, they generate true randomness from the inherent uncertainty of quantum measurements. This is gold for cryptography, simulations and fair lotteries. The universe, it turns out, is the best random number generator. Can quantum computers model economics, politics or human behavior? Some theorists say yes. Social systems involve uncertainty, entanglement, influence, and non-linear dynamics, all quantum-like. While not literally quantum, these systems might benefit from quantum-inspired algorithms for solving complex equations faster. But simulating consciousness, that's a bridge too far for now. Let's talk about quantum entanglement of socks. You put on two socks, you go to work, one sock vanishes, you come home and the other sock is also gone. Coincidence or entanglement? Of course, socks aren't quantum particles, but the metaphor holds in quantum mechanics, two particles can be so deeply linked that measuring one instantly determines the other, no matter the distance. It's not magic, it's physics, and it's the heart of quantum communication and quantum cryptography. A bit is binary, zero or one, like a light switch, on or off. A qubit is a sphere, it can be zero, one, or any superposition in between. It's like a spinning coin, neither heads nor tails until it lands. And when you entangle qubits, their combined state is exponentially larger. Two qubits equal sine four states, 50 qubits equal sine over a quadrillion states. That's the power. Right now, the US and China are neck and neck. IBM, Google and Continuum lead in superconducting qubits. China dominates in quantum communication and photonic computing. Europe has strong research but lags in commercialization. Russia is advancing with ion traps and national programs. Canada has D-Wave. Israel has quantum startups, but leadership is fluid. The first to achieve fault-tolerant quantum computing will dominate the next century. This isn't just science, it's geopolitics. Quantum technology could break encryption, disrupt economies and enable unbreakable secure communication. Nations are investing billions. The US has export controls. China has national mandates. The EU fears a quantum apocalypse in cybersecurity. As one report warned, the country that masters quantum computing will set the rules of the 21st century. Quantum computing is not just a tool. It's a revelation, a mirror held up to the universe, showing us that reality is far stranger, more interconnected and more wondrous than we ever imagined. It will break things, it will create things, it will challenge our understanding of knowledge, security and intelligence. But one thing is certain, we are no longer just observers of the quantum world. We are learning to speak its language. And when the first truly powerful quantum computer hums to life, it won't just compute an answer, it will whisper the secrets of the cosmos. The universe is not only stranger than we suppose, but stranger than we can suppose. JBS Haldane said, Welcome to the quantum age. And there you have it, my cosmic companions. Remember, every challenge is just a stepping stone to greatness. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe so we can keep exploring together, and drop a comment to share your thoughts. Until next time, stay curious, stay bold, and keep chasing those dreams.